Hello, welcome to Miniature Isles, my name is Stuart and welcome to a painting tutorial. So today's subject is this lovely little 15mm print from 3D Breed. Now they sell a wide range of, of files, I don't think they sell prints themselves, though there may be some commercial prints out there, but I'll pop a link in the show description below and you'll be able to go and see their, their miniatures if you're interested. But I'm painting a, a project for Battle Group at the moment in 15mm based around the Pacific War and this is one of my Marines. Now the object of this video is to sort of take you through the process that I use to paint miniatures of this scale to a fairly high tabletop standard but halfway through there is a place you'll be able to stop at a more basic standard so they will be useful to painters of, of many different abilities and maybe some of you will be able to give me tips and tricks and things in, in the comments as well, I'm always looking to learn myself. I'm going to use a method that I've been using fairly commonly um, on small scale miniatures and even some larger but I like to prime my miniatures using a zenithal process so black prime first I usually do it through the airbrush for smaller scale miniatures but obviously you can use a rattle can and then I use white through the airbrush as well to give a light source of which to paint over now the idea of a zenithal um, highlight is that it comes from a single source but that doesn't quite work for gaming miniatures so what I tend to do is, is aim mainly top down with the airbrush and what that does is it just leaves a little bit of shadow in the recesses underneath um, and then after I finish that I often go on and dry brush to really pick out some of the detail and the edges and I do that in white as well now why why do I do that you, you may ask well it's because I like to base coat in Citadel Contrast and Army Painter Speed Paint um, on many of my, my smaller miniatures. I don't do this all the time, but it's become quite a staple part of my process. And I think it does a number of things. First thing is it's, it's quite easy and smooth to paint your base coat, but also it, um, it takes away some of the need to do some highlighting and shading, especially if you use this zenithal process in, in order to prep the miniatures. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, you can achieve the same or very similar kind of process just by priming in gray and then dry brushing in white. Now, when Citadel first released contrast paint, all the examples are given over a flat prime, usually a white or a cream. Now, while this can be perfectly usable um, it's not the kind of standard to finish I'm after so I played around with the paints a lot using glazes using using them at different viscosities and over different primes and I worked out that if you you paint over a miniature that already looks like it's in grayscale when you paint that first coat on provided you've picked the right shade you do have a, a miniature that already looks like it's, it's shaded and highlighted a little bit more than it, and it does just over the white now at that stage you could leave it there, but I like to go on afterwards and do further highlights and finishing touches, of which I'll show you later on in the video. So let's get started. Now the, the Marines themselves have quite a, an unusual colour um, main uniform. Um, it's, um, it's a kind of a bluey, greeny grey, depending on what image or picture you look at. So there is a little bit of room for variation there or choosing your own colors so all of the colors that i select today um, you know by all means substitute them for the paints that are closest to it in your ranges if you are following along we might just inspire you or give you an idea of how you may go about using it yourself now i'm actually going to start with camo cloak from army painter and that's one of their speed paint range which is essentially their version of contrast paint now if you don't use army paint and you do have um, contrast paints there are a number of greens that could work um, and I think Militar and Green or Creed Camo would be a decent enough um, substitution for this. All I do now is use this green to paint in all the areas of the main uniform, leaving all the webbing, boots, hat, skin, etc. Now that's that base layer on and you can already see that uh, the, the pre-highlight um, with the airbrush and the dry brushing um, and then the, the thin coat of camo cloak 
has already given us some natural highlights and if you didn't want to go any further and highlight afterwards you've got a very effective miniature especially for this scale now a couple of little notes here i've been fairly careful not to go on any areas that, that don't want to be that green as a, as a couple of reasons for it the first one and the main one is i want to make use of that that pre highlight and that that dry brush that i did on the miniature with the other colors and if i go over with it with the green a little bit it loses some of the effects that you get from that single coat the second one is because army painter speed paints tend to sometimes reactivate when you apply another color over the top especially at lighter shades and things so whites and creams over the top of darker colors can be a little bit of an issue mainly find the issue with the reds and browns more than the other colors and i've not had an issue working on the miniatures that i've done for this um, but it's just something for to be mindful of um, when we highlight this green a little bit later with, with, with lighter green colors uh, there should be no issues whatsoever but it's worth bearing in mind right next up i'm going to be painting in all of the webbing the packs the hat um, in skeleton horde and that's a citadel contrast color Next up, using contrast Gorgrunter fur, I'm going to be painting the stock of the rifle and the boots. And now using contrast black templar, I'm going to paint the barrel of the gun, I'm going to paint the grenades, the handle of the pistol, basically anything that would be um, obviously blued metal. For the skin, I'm going to base coat in contrast dark oat flesh. And there we are with all the base colors done. Now you absolutely could just stop there. And at this scale, that would be more than good enough to be a, a gameable miniature. Um, the, the miniatures, these miniatures have plenty enough detail and that, uh, that zenith or pre-highlight and the bit of dry brushing just gives you enough edge there to uh, when you apply these contrast and speed paint colors to make them stand out enough and make make it look a little bit more give it a more, bit more depth than it would do just over a, a white prime or, or something like that however we're gonna we're gonna finish the model and go on and highlight so we're gonna go back to the main color now the green I'm going to be using a Vallejo colour and this is USMC Tank Crew and from the Panzer Aces range. This just turns out to be the perfect highlight for the Camo Cloak Army Painter Speed Paint. What I'm doing is really just trying to pick out the tops of the folds in the clothes rather than the recesses leaving that base colour there. And there we are, so that's the USMC tank crew as a highlight. And again, you could absolutely leave it there. That's well and truly highlighted. Again, I'm going to push it that little bit further, make them a little bit more special. Um, and I'm going to use the next layer, which is another Panzer Aces color, and this is the highlight for that paint. So it's actually called Highlight US MC Tank Crew, and it is very light indeed. But I'm just going to pick out where the light catches on the very top surfaces. And that's those extra highlights on just to make it pop a little bit more now the next stage is to start highlighting all the webbing areas and, and on the top of the helmet as well and for that i'm going to be using model color dark sand now when i do the helmet i want to really concentrate just on the top of the helmet and i want to maintain the shadow that i already have beneath it so i sort of start in the top on the center and just do some 
light brushes across the top and we're going to add camo to the helmet later on so it will hold and hide sorry a couple of mistakes if you make them um, but I just want to make sure that I don't get rid of all the shadow around the edge it's just where the lights catch in the top and then for the rest it's a matter of just picking out some of the edges and the bottom of the packs and things just to give them a little bit more definition and that's the dark sand stage finished if you really want to you can add a bit of white and i'm going to use off white here for model color to the model color dark sand about 50 50 um, and then you can really just kind of pick up the very very top edges of the odd pack or something like that just to really make it pop in the same way as we did with the, the usmc highlight Next up, we're gonna highlight the brown, and for that, another model color, and it's orange brown. And again, super subtle, super simple, just a little mark on the back of the stock there. And I just wanna pick out a couple of little bits on the boots, not too much. So next up, I just wanna highlight the skin and make that stand out a tiny bit more for that we're going to be using as another Vallejo colour but it's from their Noctura range we're going to use Fairy Flesh and the goal here really is just to pick out the nose and the, and the top of the cheekbones maybe the bottom of the chin now that's the skin touched up just touched up the knuckles and fingers as well to really make them stand out and we are getting very close to done now now one of the final parts is the camo on the top of the helmet cover. Now you can obviously paint your helmets as, as uncovered and have them as the same green as the, the, the uniform. Or you can go for the camo which I think really really adds to the miniature and makes it stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to use three colours for the camo on the top of the helmet. I'm going to paint them in this order. So first off some grey brown from scale colour wallfront range and from the same range some olive green and then finally some primer red starting with the darker colour first the grey brown i'm just painting on some irregular splodges next up it's the green Similar patterns, slightly overlapping in places over the first layer, then the final layer, and the one I believe that brings it all together and just makes it look right, it's the primer red. And then in my mind, there's one final thing to do, and that's just add a subtle highlight to the weapons. Now, they are supposed to be blue, so very dark in colour and black. And there's two ways you could go really. You could use a grey, something like graphite grey from scale colour or any dull grey. I'm going to go away that um, many people probably won't like because I don't want it to make it look too shiny. But I'm actually going to use some um, black metal from scale colour. But I'm going to use it very, very subtly just to pick out a few to top little areas as if the gun has been worn. And there we are completely finished and based. That's a very simple basing scheme. I won't go through how I did it. If anyone's really interested, just pop uh, pop a note in the comments and I'll and I'll and I'll take you through it there. Now any questions please do get in contact with me pop a, pop, a, pop a comment below message me if you'd like to as well through my social media you can find that in the show description i'm um, always happy to answer questions around painting um, and my sort of theories and thought processes um, for people who um, don't want to paint the miniatures to a, a huge amount of detail hopefully you still found it useful 
um, at least to the mid stage those of you who uh, are interested in a slightly sort of higher standard hopefully you found the second half useful as well or just enjoy watching it obviously it is still a gaming miniature it, there are lots of things that could be much much better i'm not saying it's the most fant fantastic thing out there but i definitely think it's towards the higher end of gaming standard um and um and i'm sure that not everyone wishes to paint that way and they want a nice simple scheme but hopefully this tutorial goes some way to cover two parts really so the, the more basic side and then show how you can highlight afterwards and and that you can leave certain highlight stages off just to match your own satisfaction level skill level boredom level and all the rest but i hope you found it useful um, thanks very much for watching if you are new to the channel and you found it through this video please do check out the other things on the channel there are a couple of battle group or 15 millimeter world war ii related pacific um, videos new to the channel at the moment and there are lots of other things as well mostly historical but there's a there's a few things across there so give the channel a little look over give us a subscription if you like it and give the video a like as it really helps us out but thanks so much for watching take care and i'll catch you soon